Hey guys, welcome to my review for Arrows of the Queen, first in a series called Heroes of Valdemar by Mercedes Lackey. This is the first Mercedes Lackey book that I have ever read, and it is her first published work. From what I can tell, it's a good place to start if you're interested in picking up any of her books. She wrote this in 1987, and that's something to keep in mind while you read it. Not every idea is the newest or most exciting. It's kind of a coming of age story, but the way in which she presents it all is something special, something that I think a lot of SFF fans on here would enjoy. At the center of Valdemar is its capital, Haven, in which lives the queen and her heralds. Heralds are queen's guards, diplomats, warriors, gifted, meaning for now, vaguely magical, strategists, teachers, etc. They are chosen from around the kingdom and brought to the Collegium where they learn to be heralds by these sort of, and stick with me here, magical psychic courses called companions. They are chosen at times as successors to previous heralds and each and every companion will eventually choose a herald. They will always be attached to a herald or otherwise looking for one. Those chosen to be heralds are usually done so because of some specific need that the kingdom has, a need that that specific person fits. There's been recent trouble in Valdemar though, the threat of conspiracy as one special herald chosen to be Queen's Own, or King's Own, but in this case Queen's Own, named Talamar, has been unexpectedly murdered. The duty of Queen's Own is not just to be the Queen's right and left hand advisor and friend, but to help kind of train the Queen's heir to become Queen herself. And as things are, the heir is nicknamed the Brat, and for good reason. With Talamar gone, the future of Valdemar and its heir are in question. For to truly be the heir, she must be chosen by a companion and become a herald. And at this rate, the heir has like no chance at becoming a herald, which is what the enemy wants. Talamar's companion, Roland, sets off to find a replacement Queen Zone, and is taking a lot longer than usual. Meanwhile, a girl named Talia, living on a farm in the outskirts of the kingdom, and a clan of Holderkin, a strict society that thrives on female submission and polygamy. Talia lives with her father and many mothers, but dreams of these to her legendary companions and heralds from the books she reads. She's unbelievably reserved, though, and I just couldn't really possibly imagine things being different than what they are, or people being different than what they are. Both her father and his head wife, Keldar, are fairly unforgiving and uncaring people, especially when it comes to Talia, whom they don't understand or even try to understand at all. Keldor attempts to force Talia, who is now 13, into marriage. At her choice, she gets to pick whether she wants to be first wife, thus head wife, for one man, or underwife for another. To Keldor, the other wives shock, Talia is not so into the idea, and on her way out from this drama that that is just bound to create, Talia sees the most beautiful, brilliant white horse coming over the hill. So this book has its faults, but it's got a lot going for it. Going from the holding that Talia is from to the Collegium, very much feels like leaving an old, backwards world and entering into a new one. One that generally has respect for everyone, regardless of who they are, where they came from, what gender or sexuality they have, what they know or don't know, etc. It really feels like a literal time hop from one era to the next, and seeing what happens to a character that's plunged into a situation like that. I think that's where a lot of this, this book's strengths come from, the Collegium itself, and those there trained to be heralds those that already are heralds, the teachers and instructors and authority figures. They're just also kind and understanding and generous and trusting, and it's really nice. There are times when a character will do something not so smart or good or have a moment where they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and the authority figure in that situation will genuinely listen, not jump to too many conclusions and be fair towards them, listen to what they were thinking or feeling and come to an understanding that doesn't necessarily end in cruelty or punishment. It's kind of refreshing, and I don't feel like that happens too often. Now, the plot is fairly meandering, not gonna lie. It's a bit slow at times, and the pace is questionable. There's plenty of story there, and I feel like the writing itself is not slow, but the pacing is a bit all over the place and tends to either drag or speed up in random intervals. I did enjoy the writing, though. It's nothing showy, but really does a good job of placing the characters in these settings. The characters themselves are a bit wishy-washy and often aren't focused on nearly enough, and I'm not sure if that's the writing's fault or if it's a reflection of Talia's personality specifically, and it's intentional. Because, I don't know, Talia is so extremely shy and reserved and generally withdrawn, we get only glimpses of what she's thinking and feeling, as other characters do. So we switch off to the other characters and how they see her. Most of the story is spent in that switching off. We get a bit of what Talia is feeling, then whatever characters around her are perceiving in relation to her. So overall, I have some really good feelings about this book, and also some not so great feelings about this book. I feel like this book has to be very much a foundation for the books to come. I very much feel like the world building, the characters, just everything is just being set up in this book 
for future books, which I think might bother some people and I kind of wish it was its own thing more and kind of didn't dilly-dally with the plot so much that it wouldn't kind of drag in some places and jump forward in other random places. It very much feels like a first book, but I think it's promising. I really do think that a lot of people would like this. A lot of people would like the themes in this and the characters and the things that are happening in this if they were to give it a shot. So really wanted to just share that with you guys. Really wanted to let you know that this exists and let you know what it's about and give you possibly a reason to pick it up and give it a shot. Anyway, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you read this before, if you read anything by Mercedes Lackey before, please let me know what you think. If you're interested now in reading anything by her, please let me know what you think about that as well. I'll be reading more by her for sure, including this series and the other stuff that she's written and hopefully I'll have more insight to give you at a later date on those future things that I read. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later with more.